and that was your look at the currency market as we begin a new week. First up this afternoon, financial expert Dr. Williams Repart says government will not default in the repayment of loans despite the country's the downgrade of the country's credit rating to deeper junk status by rating agency Fitch. Now Fitch says its decision on Ghana reflects surging interest costs on domestic debt and a prolonged lack of access to eurobond markets. Speaking to Joy Business, Dr. Pepra, who is an associate professor at the Andrews University in Michigan, U.S., said government must, however, act decisively to reduce further pressures on the economy. He therefore wants government to cut its expenditure, both current and capital, drastically in order to settle its interest payments promptly. When it comes to the issue of capacity to pay, um, Ghana is in the position. In terms of character of Ghana, when we are doing the um, uh, credit worthy analysis, we have not defaulted in any of our, uh, of our loans. So this gives a signal that the likelihood of Ghana having a character to default is not very uh, eminent. Well, in the course of the program, we will be speaking with Professor Lord Mensah, who is an economist, on this uh, latest Fitch downgrade and what it means for our economy. He joins us over the phone. Uh, just a bit of education, Prof. What does the further downgrade by Fitch mean? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now, please. Yes. So I was asking what the further downgrade by Fitch means. Yes, um, what it means is that you know, the country's ability to pay its debt is further degenerating. I mean, if you are triple C and you are downgraded to C, it means the probability of paying your debt is uh, very, you know, low. So it sends um, a signal to investors as well, uh, because um, as the country is being downgraded, then investors are very much aware that there's a likelihood that, you know, the country will default. So whatever arrangement being put in place to ensure that at least the invested funds are secure uh, must be done in that regard. And this downgrade coming just days before the IMF negotiations starting today, what sort of impact does this further have, this downgrade further have on how negotiations go and what alterations government may have to make, what type of lending program it will eventually have? Yeah, of course, um, for IMF, what will be on the table for discussion is just um, Ghana's sovereignty and uh, the ability for the government to pay. Um, going down the line with uh, a downgrade from the table in that manner, uh, government know, uh, sorry, the IMF knows that, of course, um, obviously it's becoming difficult for government to pay its debt. So maybe government may have to look at renegotiating you know, some of it, you know, that low on the government's balance sheet. So possibly that is going to be a talk of the time. And already we've heard of um, imminent um, um, government debt restructuring coming up. And so these are all things that uh, we should expect, I mean, between the IMF and the government. What should be uh, the posture of government uh, during these negotiations? You mentioned debt restructuring, which has been a major topic ahead of the negotiations. Yeah, I mean, uh, government should come clear on, on I mean, the, the debt, whether uh, we know, we're putting all the debt on the table as far as uh, external debt and then local debt is concerned. But local debt is not much of a problem. Um, I don't think uh, that we should also treat the local financier as a lender of last resort. So when it comes to uh, I mean, uh, debt restructuring, we shouldn't focus too much on the local environment. In the worst case, I mean, government can tax its own people to pay for um, some of this debt, or possibly even print money for an economy that is operating below capacity like Ghana. So uh, the discussion should focus mainly on, you know, the external debt, which, you know, the city depreciation is also making it grow. Because we've not added on any debt the whole of this year, but we see the debt, you know, growing as a result of the city depreciation. So. I'm expecting, you know, the negotiations to focus more on external renegotiations rather than, you know, internal re domestic renegotiations. Because domestic, I mean, it's always there as a market for government to raise money. So if we turn up to touch, you know, the market and it turns out that the investor confidence goes down completely, 
the poll start to fill on their money, and institutions are going to do the same. So effectively, uh, government going into this negotiation should treat the domestic market as a lender of last resort, so that they will give them kind of, I mean, pref the market kind of preference, so that they don't, you know, distort that little that is left. Because if you look at the uh, last budget, um, the middle the government, you know, foresaw that um, the international market is likely to close on us. You read the budget in 20, uh, for 2022 in November, I think the financing of our budget deficit was tilted towards the domestic market. Mm. That means that the government itself is aware of the, of the uh, domestic market being financed of last resort. So they should give it a kind of priority and they, it should be sensitive. Also, if you look at the domestic market, clearly, the market is dominated by institutional you know, um, um, entities. So you're looking at banks, pensions, and all those who are invested in government fields. And if you take a typical bank in Ghana, clearly you will see on the asset side of its balance sheet, most of the loan portfolio holdings are with the government. And so if it turns out that we are renegotiating and it turns out that the asset value goes down, mm. uh, it may have impact on you know, some of these banks and then pension institutions. So we really have to be careful how we go about you know, um, some of these renegotiations that are being called for. Uh, speak about government having to come clear. A, a few notes from the IMF from a Q&A session uh, that has been shared. I just want to read it out. out. It says the International Monetary Fund has reiterated that Ghana's public debt increased from 65% to 80% of gross domestic product during the period of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. This is contrary to government's figures that public debt to GDP was about 73%. So the disparity in figures there. The fund also saying at the same time that uh, government's fiscal efforts to preserve debt sustainability were not seen as sufficient by investors leading to credit rating downgrades, non-resident investors exit from the domestic bond market, and a loss of access to international capital markets. What I found interesting uh, from that uh, information shared by the IMF is a disparity when it comes to um, Ghana's public debt uh, as to GDP? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, when it comes to uh, Ghana's uh, public debt, clearly uh, there are disparities, even in house. When you go to Ministry of Finance, you get a number which is different from the Bank of Ghana's number. And then the international community, the numbers that they put out there. It all boils down to some of the debt that are having that kind of contingent claims on them. So something like the extra debt, which will pair with um, the extra I mean, taxes that we have. So that one, maybe we may not count it as you know, a debt because it has already a contingent claim to it. And so if the disparities are you know, um, coming from different angles, depending on how you see you know, um, the ability to pay when it comes to this debt. And finally, the IMF uh, program is intended at protecting the vulnerable. Uh, it says also to create inclusive growth, but people are concerned what this could signal, uh, some more difficult times for those who are already burdened. For the ordinary person who is wondering, what is in this for me? What should I expect in the coming uh, months? What would you tell them? Yeah, of course, the IMF will tell you that they're going into a program to uh, to support the vulnerable, um, I would say that um, whatever IMF program we go into is a sacrifice. Because every situation that takes us into IMF has to do with our financial management. And financial management means that maybe we were spending in excess into certain areas which was making the people happy. At the end of the day, IMF comes and then they tend to maybe reduce government expenditure by touching on certain key areas like employment issues and all this. If you come to the ministries, you have people in there who are more or less redundant. They're not, they're not, they're not functioning as it's supposed to be. You go to other agencies, you realize that people have been employed, but then when it comes to matching up output to their employment, you know, um, the salaries that it takes, you won't get anything about it. So if IMF comes and they go through all the process and make sure all these things, all these people are not active, are clear. I know some people are not going to be happy, but in all the benefit of the economy in the long term. So if IMF tells you that, hey, look, we're coming for the vulnerable, I mean, in the short term, there's going to be a sacrifice. But yeah. I mean, looking at the long term, obviously, it's good for the country.
Thank you so much, Economist Professor Lord Mensah, sharing some perspective as we continue to uh, monitor the IMF Ghana uh, negotiations for an economic program. Uh, hopefully, if there, there's some more news we'll share with you. But this other news uh, that we have been following for you, for the first time in 15 weeks of almost four months, if you like, government missed the target of its treasury bill sale by almost 10% despite surging interest rates. Now, this follows the downgrade of the country's credit rating into further junk status by uh, rating agency Fitch. Charles Nixon Yeboah has more. This should send a signal to the government to tighten its fiscal policy to prevent further stress on the economy. The sale of the treasury bills took place the same day rating agency Fitch announced the downgrade of the country's credit worthiness to deeper junk status despite surging interest rate. The yield on the 91-day T-bill finally reached 30% from 29.90% the previous week. The six-month bill, which is already trading above 31%, inched up marginally to 31.34%. Government secured 1.19 billion CDs from the sale of the short-term securities, almost 10% lower than its target of 1.33 billion CDs. Should the shortfall in meeting its Treasury securities target mean that investors, largely banks, are being cautious in investing in government securities. However, this challenge will compel government to move fast over the negotiation with the International Monetary Fund for an economic program to avert any liquidity constraint. Joining us, Head of Trading at Republic Securities, Patrick Agama. Uh, Patrick, features downgrade, making investors cautious. Tell us how the auction ended on Friday. Okay, good afternoon. So for Friday on the money market, the government raised a total of 1.1 billion against a target of 1.3 billion, recording a dip in subscription by 10.4%. Um, this we've not seen after a very long time. Um, the 91 day cleared at 30.18%, so we saw bids as high as 30.5% being accepted. The one in two day cleared at 31.3%, two bits as high as 31.6% were accepted. Again, the 91 did dominate uh, the bits accepted by 80% against 20% for the 182 day bill. Uh, Patrick, what would it take uh, to bring some certainty back to the market? I mean, what would government have to do right now? I know they are in a negotiation with the IMF, but that is long term ish. Yes, you know, to bring some uh, confidence back into the market, we uh, expect government to tell the market more the details of this uh, debt restructuring. Uh, investors have already started taking a laid-back approach towards the market. Even in the secondary market, you can see that uh, the, the offers and even the bids are a bit reduced based on this uh, uncertainty investors are feeling. So, having some information from the government, despite the fact that we are all waiting for the discussion to be over, having some information from the government will help the market a lot. Uh, let's turn to the stock market. Not looking good either. The bearish performance of the Ghana Stock Exchange continued last week, Patrick. Yes, the market is still seeing a very uh, off tone where uh, we see people uh, trying to sell the number of shares they have. Mm. We saw uh, some declines in Ecobank Ghana Total, GCB and Societe, but we also saw Carl Bank and Asset Bank gaining some papers to us, but the gain was not enough to uh, hold the market, so the market lost the ground in both the Composite Index and Financial Stock Index. How does this week look? This week, we, we still expect the, the stock market and even the fixed income market to still show that offer to where investors should be willing to sell and maybe invest in something else. But yeah. uh, we expect there to be significant pressure on uh, stocks like GCB and uh, Coban Ghana over, over the week. Thank you so much, Head of Trading at Republic Securities, uh, Patrick Agama there with the latest on uh, last week's Treasury bill sale as well as uh, performance on the stock market.
Now, at the core of financial inclusion, inclusion persons in low-income communities worry they have been excluded from accessing formal financial services, though banks have made efforts to extend their reach uh, in a cost-effective manner, much needs to be done. Actors Bank is testing a branchless banking model to bring banking services to millions of Ghanaians through authorized agents. The innovation offers an additional income stream for both employed and the unemployed. There is more in this report. The role of agency banking was magnified during the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic. Branches of most banks were temporarily closed during the period. However, agents served as alternative channels for banking during the lockdown. Customers of closed branches were referred to the nearest agent's points. Head of agency banking at Access Bank, Hetty Mesa, says the rollout of the agency banking project breaks the barrier of low-income populations' access to an array of products offered by banks. She was speaking at the outdooring of Access Bank's agency banking program, dubbed Access Closer. In today's retail space, we recognize that time is of an essence. And so we revising or looking at more efficient means of serving our customers. Access Bank, agency banking is one of us. We are also looking at serving them banks and the banks and providing another means of income or more earnings for people. And so that's the more reason why we're looking at um, using access closer as part of the bank's retail expansion program. Agency banking provides an opportunity for income generation for the youth. The additional income stream has resulted in the expansion of agents' businesses. Many talk of increased returns. So today, if you are an agent and you want to join the Access Bank family or Access Closer family, we urge you to go to any branch and to get started. Um, also for all our customers, we're saying that because you're bringing banking into your doorstep, you don't need to move from your vicinity to conduct your typical banking services. Agents have been recognized as an essential service. Agent banking has offered banks another distribution channel that will attract new clients and reinforce their brands. Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. Now, Good Governance Africa, a non-profit pan-African research and advocacy center, is facilitating the actualization of the full benefits of the African continental free trade area through a public stakeholder sensitization program. The organization observes entrepreneurs in Ghana could be missing out on the opportunities the continental policy presents as majority of them are oblivious of its importance. In a bid to acquaint businesses with the trade agreement, the organization embarked on a two-day workshop to retreat the detailed action plan and benefits of having a single market for Africans. The African Continental Free Trade Area, AFTA, established in 2018, seeks to create a single continental market to boost intra-African trade with free movement of businesses and investments. The trade agreement, which forms part of the African Union's Agenda 2063, aims at promoting, enhancing and advancing digital trading and electronic commerce. But recent research revealed about 34% of enterprises in Ghana, with majority being women-led, are unaware of the policy after its full implementation in January 2021. Research coordinator at the West African Regional Office of Good Governance Africa, Edward T. Sapon, emphasized the need to position micro, small and medium-scale enterprises taking advantage of the AFTA. We, we were surprised that since the launch and since the operation of the AFTA, uh, AFTA started full operation January last year, 2021. Up to now, some of them had not even heard of the AFTA and what it stands for. So it gives confirmation of the need for us to create more of these platforms to educate the local sector actors here. Good Governance Africa is positioned mainly on this is to heighten awareness. We are following the implementation processes of the National Secretariat. We are looking for pieces of information that are critical for businesses to act upon. We package those uh, information sets, then create platforms for the businesses to get to know. With Africa's population pegged at 1.2 billion, the single market is expected to generate an estimated GDP of 3.4 trillion US dollars. 
lecturer at the Department of Planning KNUST, Professor Dan Inkum, is advocating a change of mindset and the implementation of policies by the government to create internal demand for locally made goods. He believes this approach would avert the taste for foreign goods and help promote after. I think mindset change is very, very important. Um, change our mindset in the sense that for any business, the consumer, if you're developing any product, the first thing you have to think about is how do I sell it? So you do the business with your consumer in mind. But interestingly, uh, sometimes the Ghanaian consumer prefers foreign things to the local ones. So I think that for me, one of the biggest steps that the government can take is to create the demand. Uh, for example, let me take rice. It is possible that we say that for all senior high schools, buy Ghana made rice. And that's a big market. The two day workshop brought together representatives from the business, trade, and commerce community. Some of them spoke to join News. What I've learned through this particular seminar is that Africa has actually come in to help the business sector. And this particular thing is for the business community and our ability to communicate this particular policy to them will help make this particular uh, agreement a success. For Joe News, Emmanuel Bright Kweku reporting. The World Bank has pledged its commitment to support Ghana's technological development agenda to accelerate the growth of the economy. According to the regional director of the World Bank, Franz Dresgos, it is necessary to improve the digital and technological skills of the human workforce in developing countries like Ghana. He made this known after a tour of the Ghana Tech Lab in Accra. ...can afford, which is a big issue everywhere. You know, we find that in many countries, maybe the upper middle class can afford digital data, but it's harder for people on the lower end of the, the income spectrum. So how can we get digital broadband out to everybody? How can we get digital skills out to people? Uh, I think it was William who was saying in particular, used to people who would come from the upper north, uh, sorry, Upper West or, or Upper East regions to get the training in, uh, in Accra. Delighted to see that that's moving out to uh, other areas. So right now we're just taking stock of what's been achieved and I'm sure we'll digest that and, and feed it into the next operation we support. Now, to help equip consumers with basic knowledge in IT skills, Slam Technologies has launched the Nimdia app to create awareness on cybersecurity, among other purposes. The app is designed to help the public and also offer lessons in local dialects. Here's more in this report. With the growth of IT in Africa, there have been calls for developing countries like Ghana to localize features and operations in the ICT world to help the less privileged catch up with modern trends. This is the reason behind the Nimdia app. Speaking to Joy Business after the launch, the Director of Operations for Slam Technologies Worldwide, Mrs. Francisca Boatin said, it is important to empower Ghanaians in IT skills to protect the country from global cybersecurity issues. So it's not technically financial literacy, but how you can use IT or digital, the digital space securely so that's commerce. So we have a lot on cyber bullying, cyber um, awareness, cyber hygiene, how you can actually make sure that your system is updated, you are using the right kind of passwords to protect yourself because even if you don't have the financial education and you have the right education in terms of how to protect your system, it will be difficult for a scammer or a cyber or a fraud person just to come into your system and steal from you. On her part, technical advisor Minister of Education, Shilana Buama, expressed optimism the app will help empower the poor in rural areas. The goal looks daunting, but obviously it can be done. And so the, from the Ministry of Education, we are here to lend our support and goodwill and see you through this very daunting journey. I'm very happy to have heard certain words that I was looking out for. The fact that there is a goal, the fact that there is a desire to measure impact, and the fact that it is going to be targeted at hard to reach areas. These are the things that matter to us. We all know that digital literacy has come to stay and we can't avoid it anymore. 
And that's our program uh, this afternoon. Thanks for watching, everyone. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Thanks for watching. We are back same time tomorrow.